Hello everyone, welcome to another episode. So today Soham and I are going to make a very important video on some of the very important changes that the Canadian government has made regarding the immigration. Uh, so it will help a lot of people from the United States, from India, from all over the world, especially people from the United States who are in H-1B visa, who are in the tech industries, who are facing some uh, challenges in the industry. Uh, so, Som, you want to say something about these changes a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, uh, so Canadian government have been uh, trying uh, for a long time to make the immigration more friendly, friendly for like you know different immigrants, and they're trying to attract you know a lot of talents from outside Canada. And uh, in that in that regards, they have made some recent changes to their immigration policy, which will make it a lot lot more friendly than it was before. But you know, before we you know move on to the changes that has happened or that 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 will be coming into effect. So since you are an H one B holder and you are in U S for some time, so why do you think uh, you know people in U S who are you know holding an H one B uh, need a backup plan? Because we know U S has you know a lot of exciting opportunities and you know a lot of talent attraction U S does, right? But why do you think there is a requirement of a backup plan? for each one beholders in the US, if you can, you know, say in a, you know, a little bit about it. Sure, that's actually a very good question that you asked. The reason is very simple, like let's say, although we know that USA has a lot of opportunities, they have like the big tech industries, and even if we are like civil engineers, there are a lot of companies in civil engineering industry as well, and even electrical, mechanical, whatever. But the problem with the H1B visa holders is that if you lose a job, that you can only stay in the country for 60 days and within that time period you have to find another job. So that kind of creates some pressure for the people who are like working here, who have their families here, they bought a house and and they maybe their kids are going to school here. So these, these kind of create stress situation for those families. So if they have a backup option in Canada, if they have a Canada a PR or a work permit or something of that sort, they can at least go to Canada, work for some time in the meantime, and if they get another opportunity, they can come back to the United States. Because Canada and United States are just neighboring countries, we know that. So it's, it's much simpler for those families and it will be easier for them. So I think backup is a good option. Right, right, definitely. And, and you know, sometimes because even in US and, and here in Canada, the hiring process is not uh, very fast, right? Sometimes it takes like you know upwards of some sometimes let's say a month, right, for the hiring process. Yes. So you know even if people are getting interviews, they may not get the offer before the sixty day mark, right? And mm. once uh, that sixty day mark has gone, then it's just you know going back to the country, coming back. It's a lot of lot of hassle, and as you said, schooling and all uh, would would get affected, and you know, a lot of other things. It's, it's you know difficult to set up things back in India or any other country that they're from. So yeah, True. definitely. You know, some backup options are, are definitely important. So uh, yeah. So yeah, so, just a quick thing before we move on. So yeah, before we come back to this discussion, let me if you can gist up like the what are what are the if you can just point it out what are the new rules that the Canadian government has made which is helping the people who work with like specialty skills. Right. So uh, you know, like beforehand, like. The immigration system of Canada is, has always been skill-based immigration. So they have something called Express Entry, in which you know people from every profile they have they, they you know create their own profile, and based on the scores that they have, based on their education, their language skills, their work experience, they are ranked and they are in the in, like in a pool of candidates and. The people with the highest, uh, you know, score gets the call. You know, let's say they are going to take three thousand people, and the top three thousand people would get the call. So the change is. So now, what is the change, right? So basically, what they are doing is they are focusing on some groups. For example, they have created six categories, uh, uh, like six uh, high high demand categ like categories, right? Mm. So those categories are. Uh, so those categories are people who are bilingual, like basically people who are who know who knows French, right? So they are in demand. Healthcare occupation professionals are in demand. Uh, STEM occupation, and and this is, you know, basically a lot of Indian people come into play. You know, engineering, math, science, and technology, right? So all the engineering jobs and all that. 
they come under STEM category. There are trade occupation, you know, electrician, plumbers, and all those people. Transportation, transport occupation, and agriculture. So these are the uh, six categories that they have uh, identified, and uh, they are going to uh, basically uh, do rounds, which are uh, category specific. So recently, there was a round which uh, targeted only healthcare professionals and uh, they would be conducting future rounds which would have uh, you know like basically one for stem occupation or maybe multiple rounds for stem occupation and and so that what that would do is that would uh, uh, improve the chances for people who are in those categories so basically uh, what uh, you know those categories so you know some of the uh, in examples you know for example civil engineer data scientist uh, software, software developers, to name a few, right? So these are all the uh, all the categories, you know, some of the categories that come under STEM. So they would be they would be preferred. So the suggestion would be to create an express entry profile to keep it updated. If if you know people have their IL score, uh, to update that, and if people do not have an IL score, to uh, you know, give and give the IELTS exam because every express entry profile you need to have the English proficiency exam. So, uh, you know, keep the profile updated and wait for those draws. And if you are, you know, if you come under one of these categories, then your chances of getting a PR would uh, increase a lot under this. Great. So basically, to summarize what you are saying, like before. It, before the before for the PR there is to a there is to be a draw for the general population like everybody would be included in that group in that so that and then you will be selected based on your score but now they have like made like six categories from which they can be selected right if I if I understood yeah great so that I think is a pretty good opportunity that the Canadian government is currently opening for like people from different categories especially STEM which includes engineering right and I also heard like there is another rule that they need for like youtubers or something like that if you can really yeah, deliver it here yeah so they are also uh, opening something that's called nomad like digital nomad visa so uh, you know since COVID what has happened is a lot of the jobs have become remote jobs and people like a lot of people what they're doing is they are uh, you know working in a specific uh, company but they are not keeping their location constant so they're moving into you know different countries countries that are affordable or countries that they want to explore countries that they want to you know potentially move in and they're going and working in in that country so what that helps is you know once you go and start living in a country you start you know spending money in that country and you uh, you know take part in the economic development of the country right so a lot of the european countries and you know, like many countries have actually opened, you know, digital nomad visa. So Canada has also joined in into that. So they are also opening digital nomad visa in which they can, uh, they're going to uh, give a visitor visa up to six months to uh, people who are working from home in a company from any country. And when they're having the visitor visa, they are open or they are allowed to apply to Canadian companies and they are allowed to get a job in here and then they can convert that digital uh, that visitor visa into a uh, work permit and also and you, you you don't necessarily have to have a job so in this case you know the youtubers freelancers uh, you know people who are uh, you know pursuing their their passion right like photography skill all those people they can also come in they can also you know stay here work do their freelance activity for up to six months, and in the meantime, they if they are they are free to uh, you know apply for Canadian jobs, and and you know stay in the country if they, if they can you know convert that uh, um, you know this visa into a work permit that they are you know more than welcome to. So just a quick question here: Is this visa the visitor visa, or is it, it name is something different? Nomadic visa or something you're seeing? So it's it's called digital nomad visa but mm -hmm. so basically they're giving a visitor visa but in the visitor visa you are allowed to work basically for nice. another company with the company doesn't necessarily need to be in Canada so you can work for a for a company outside Canada but you can stay in Canada you can do freelance activity that freelance can be in US in mm -hmm. Canada any other country but you can stay in Canada and 
you know usually if people come in visitor visa they are not allowed to uh, you know right. uh, do interviews and you know apply for jobs but in this in this instance they are allowing actually people of uh, you know coming with visitor visa to actually convert their uh, visa into a work permit so that's an opportunity that that uh, uh, the Canadian government is giving and and uh, like most likely they may even renew the visa right so they are giving the visa at a time for six months mm. but that may be uh you know open for renewal as well so that's that's a pretty good opportunity for people one great, just want to and visit canada at least so that's, sure. that's a pretty good opportunity yeah. yeah i mean i'm sure like you explained it very well i'm sure people who want to explore this uh rules a little bit more they can kind of see it but uh great i think that was a good information video that we created today yeah, if you want to add anything or maybe if you want to keep it short because we don't want to make too long videos, we are making too right. long videos. So right. we want to keep it short and informative for our audience. Uh, if you want to add last points or did we cover all the two points or is there anything else? Like there wasn't some entrepreneurship or is it under the nomadic yeah. services? The entrepreneurship hasn't yet opened. So okay. by the end of the year, people who are in startups, they are, you know, uh, giving you know preference and you know open work moment to people who will be who are in startup. The startups are funded, but that would uh, you know come into effect uh, towards the end of this year. Uh, but they are giving preference to people who are working in startup or who are having their own startup. Uh, previously, you know the people who are the founders only they would have gotten the visa. Now they are allowing people like the core team or some other people in the company to uh, you know, get the visa without much hassle. Right. So usually. The visa process for a company it becomes a lot of hassle to, you know, get uh, you know the visa done for a lot of people, right? So that's why they try to avoid. So if they are reducing the hassle, then it becomes friendly for other companies. But you know, just to you know sum it up, for you know like regular people, uh, uh, if they are uh, in, in those six categories, it's it's very important to have their express entry profile updated. So basically, if then and the most important thing is if they haven't given the IELTS exam or the English proficiency exam whatever that may be uh, it's it, and if they want to uh, you know uh, apply or keep their profile updated they need to get that done ASAP and for people who are you know uh, working remotely or who are freelancers if they want to explore Canada uh, they can just apply for a visitor permit and uh, they can uh, you know come here work here and explore the you know, Canadian lifestyle so that's that's basically in, in, a, in a nutshell what we discussed. Great so I hope our audience have enjoyed the video. They have got some inf useful information. Thanks to Soham for bringing these points out. So we can see them. We will see in the next video. And also please don't forget to like and share our videos. We will bring some such useful contents in the future also. Take right. care.